We're now going to look at unit three, which was on parallel lines being cut tra by transversals. And we also talked about parallel perpendicular lines a little bit. So this one has me name things and look at the diagram. This is a purely memorization sort of thing. So something that some of you need to, to definitely focus on, but it's just terms. So if I look at one and two, so one and two are something called a linear pair because they're making a line. Okay, and linear pairs are supplementary. If instead I look at 1 and 4, 1 and 4 we know are vertical angles, and vertical angles are congruent. The next one we look at is 3 and 7. 3 and 7. So these we call corresponding angles. And corresponding angles are congruent. Next is 3 and 6. That is where we're making our little Z. So those are alternate interior angles. So alternate is talking about the fact that they're on opposite sides of my transversal, the line cutting through, and interior means they're in between the two parallel lines, and alternate interior angles are congruent. Next, we're going to look at 1 and 8. 1, 8. Okay, those are on the opposite sides of the transversal, so alternate but they're on the outside of my parallel lines. They're out here in this area, so we say alternate exterior angles, and alternate exterior angles are also congruent. I have a lot to erase that time. There we go. So four and six, four and six, those are on the same side, and they're on the inside, so same side, interior, and those are supplementary. Then 7 and 8 are another linear pair. So linear pair, which means that they are supplementary. Next we have 4 and 8 which are another pair of corresponding angles. Which means that they are congruent. 1 and 6, those don't really have any sort of special relationship. Right here. 1 and 6, they're on alternate sides, but they're not both interior, they're not both exterior, so we're just going to say none. And then we have 2 and 8. So 2 and 8 are on the same side of the transversal, so same side, and they're on the outside of your parallel line, so they're same side exterior angles, and same side exterior angles are going to be supplementary. Okay. So now we're going to use those to solve. In my first problem, which of course the first problem should be labeled number 60, is a pair of same side exterior. So honestly, I don't have a lot of those memorized. What I do is I just pick one of these angles to start with. Doesn't matter which one. I'm gonna do, mm, let's do the one on the top, okay? So I'm gonna mark that angle. I know these two are congruent from vertical angles. I draw my Z. So now here are my other two congruent angles. So did I mark the other spot I have my given information, the 35? No. So that means that the 2x minus 3 
isn't equal to 35, 2x minus 3 plus 35 equals 180. They're supplementary. So that gives me 2x plus 32 equals 180. 2x equals 150 minus 2 is 148. So x equals 74. Looking at the next one, I'm going to start with the 43 now. Boom, boom, draw my Z. And then, yes, those are another vertical angle. So this means I can set these equal. 2x plus 7 equals 43. Otherwise, you could memorize all the relationships in the diagram that we put above. But I pretty much memorize vertical angles and alternate interior angles and just kind of leapfrog until I get to where I want to be. So 2x equals 73, 73 plus 43 minus 7, which is going to give me 36. So x equals 18. Ooh, I have alternate interior angles. Yay, alternate interior angles. I know I set equal. So 8x minus 4 equals 60. 8x equals 64 and x equals 8. Then I have corresponding angles. Once again, if you weren't sure about corresponding angles, you could jump here to your little vertical angle. Oh, look, it's alternate interior. OK, so whatever you like to do, I always offer less memorization, personally. So I get x equals 10. Perfect. Also in this unit, that seems like it was forever ago, we talked about the interior angles of a triangle. So what we learned is that the angles of a triangle add to 180. So I have x plus 60 plus 90 plus x plus 40 equals 90 degrees. x plus 60 plus x plus 40 plus 90 equals 180. So 2x plus 190 equals 180, so 2x equals negative 10, and x equals negative 5. Now someone out there is like, but it can't be a negative. The angle can't be a negative, and if I substitute back in that negative 5, I will still have positive angles, so that's why I can have a negative x value there. All right, looking at the next one, oops, I thought that was a highlighter. Here's a real highlighter. Here we go. One angle, two angle, three angle. I feel like I should be doing Dr. Seuss. Um, so if I have all three angles, they sum to 180 degrees. That's 180, by the way. Okay, so I have 2x plus a bunch of junk that I don't really want to add. Calculators are great things. Calculators are great things that I don't have right now. All right. 6, 14, 188 equals 180. So 2x equals negative 8 and x equals negative 4. And that x can be negative for the same reason we talked about in the previous problem. All right. So I look at my next question. And my next question, I look at it. I have this angle in the triangle. I have this angle in the triangle. Do I have my other angle? No. What do I have? I have this thing called an exterior angle, which remembers if I take a side of a triangle and I just keep going out like that. So the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles, those two things I just highlighted green. Now, do I really have to have that memorized? No, if I hate my life and wanna do a really, really, really long problem involving a lot of parentheses, so the suggestion is to learn the exterior angle theorem because it saves a lot of steps and you're more likely to get the right answer, okay? So 19x plus 10 equals 12x plus 52. So 7x equals 42 and x equals 6. Last one, we have an isosceles triangle. And these ones, it's really important. This is where we do our little arrow thing. So that means that this angle is congruent to that angle. So here I have an x written. So that means that this other angle I've marked is also x. And now I have all three angles in my triangle. x, x, 7x, 
70. So x plus x plus 70 equals 180. So 2x plus 70 equals 180. 2x equals 110. And x equals 55. Don't forget, I didn't put one in these notes, but don't forget about some of our other favorite problems involving isosceles triangles, such as this lovely, wonderful problem. What am I giving you? I'm giving you sides of a triangle. So should sides of a triangle ever add to 180? Hint, the answer is no. Sides of a triangle do not add to 180. Instead, you're supposed to notice the fact that it tells me my base angles are congruent. So that means that this side, yay, is congruent to this side. Yay, and when two things are congruent, we can Yes, that is right, people. Set them equal. So we get x equals 8. All right. Just had to give a little aside there to my favorite math mistake, possibly of all time. Okay. The next three problems talk about parallel and perpendicular lines in terms of graphing. So parallel lines, remember, have the same slope. And perpendicular lines... Whoops. Yeah, perpendicular slopes are opposite reciprocals. Okay, so if it says determine which line is perpendicular to y equals two thirds x. So remember when we had to do all that solving for y? I'll probably be nice and give you stuff that's already solved for y. But if I'm not, you need to solve for y. So my original slope is two thirds, which means my perpendicular slope is negative 3 over 2. And then I just look at my answer choices and find the one that says negative 3 over 2. Ding, 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 winner, winner, chicken dinner. The next one says which line is parallel to y equals 4x minus 3. So what's my slope in that equation? 4. And it wants parallel, so my parallel slope is also 4. And I only have one question, D. One question, one answer. Find the slope of a line perpendicular, so perpendicular, opposite reciprocal, to the line passing through blah de blah Find your slope. Those of you who are still committed slope formula people, you do you. That is awesome. I just like table. How do you go from 4 to negative 1? Down 3. How do you go from negative 3 to positive 1? You go up 2. So my original slope is 2 over negative 3. So my answer is the perpendicular slope. Switch the sign, positive, flip it, 3 over 2. The very last thing from unit 3 was doing proofs. Yay, everyone loves proofs so much. But at least we know the first step is to always write your, yep, givens. So G is parallel to H, Y, it's given. And angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, given. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those two angles are congruent. Hopefully that will help me. Okay. So, and then the other thing, I'm also going to highlight what I know is parallel. So I know that G is parallel to H. All right. So now I'm going to focus just on the G and the H right now. So I know about angle one. What's the only other angle that they have in here? They have angle three. What do you know about angle one and angle three if those blue lines are parallel? Hmm? Those are congruent. So angle one is congruent to angle three. What type of angles are angle one and angle three? Back on the first thing we did in the video. Those are called corresponding angles. Now, if you remember, when we've been doing congruent triangles, I said that reflexive property is your BFF. Do you remember what your BFF was in this unit? Look at my proof right now. I have angle one here, and I have angle one here. So what could I do to combine those two things together? We could conclude from that that angle two is congruent to angle three by the transitive property. Transitive 
property, okay? So back in the day, it wasn't reflexive property. It was transitive property that had your heart, okay? So now that I've said that, we look at our picture, and so we're saying 2 and 3 are actually congruent. Okay, so if those two are congruent, what was my goal again? To say P is parallel to R. Well, I actually have enough to say P is parallel to R because of the converse to name what kind of angles those are. Those are alternate exterior angles. Alternate exterior angle theorem. 